Welcome to the Ying Triceps Science Fairs, a piece of the puzzle. Let's begin by asking meteorologist Dave Eichhorn why people want to connect with science fairs. Dave? Well, because months ago, these students started to work with teachers and mentors, conducting the research and preparing the presentations. This gave them a chance to engage in real scientific research and analysis, something normally not included in a high school curriculum. On fair day, the students set up their displays and prepare for their first judge. Now, by judge number three, these seasoned presenters have explained the research, defended their conclusions, and even considered options for more research or their career. Now, let's meet the students, teachers, mentors, judges, and sponsors. Listen to the voices of pre-collegiate science research and decide how you will help launch the foundation for our future scientists and engineers. After all, many careers begin here. Early on, it gave me a reason to do it. But then, after participating and seeing all the people and other projects, I really got into it and got excited in the fair. Later, it gave me a place to present what I'd done. I think that the coolest moment you can ever have do doing a science fair project is to have your hypothesis completely blown out of the water. And that moment of scientific discovery is what, what it's all about. They begin to understand that these are not exotic things. These are real world, very practical, valuable things. There's nothing like a, a good old fashioned science fair for that, in which a student needs to think about a project, research a project, make that project visual, and of course, work. And then a magic happens that the teacher and the parent cannot replicate. Because the kid needs to be able to talk to strangers. They know the parent will accept, accept them. They know the teacher will pat them on the back. But they need strangers who they don't know to come up to them, ask them questions about their work, and give them a chance, give them an audience, so the student can sell their product. Nothing is lost from this experience, and everything is to be gained. Some people might not be good at one particular subject in school and not get the best grades, but they might be excellent at science fair. A lot more of the students out there should get a chance to do science fairs. The door is open wider than it has ever been. But this last project I, I worked on with a student, uh, was a young lady who wanted to do work on the origin of the moon. Supposedly, one theory was that um, the Earth has collided with like Mars-sized objects with a grazing collision, and this kind of squeezed out some of the mantle material. And I think she had in mind some supercomputer modeling or some some vague notion of theoretical work, but we didn't have any of the tools for that. So I had suggested instead that we uh, simulate aspects of the moon's formation by using a 12-gauge shotgun and firing lead slugs into lead bricks. Well, that surprised her. <laughs> I remember I was at his house and we were shooting the gun, and he had tons of cats, so every time he shot, all the cats like ran out the door. It was so funny. I'd never done that before, and I was amazed at the crater that a shotgun slug will make in a lead brick. It was just amazing, so we both get surprised. The judge was like, you shot a gun to a brick. And usually these science fair projects now are not little things you can do in a weekend. They, they require several months preparation. It's not your typical baking soda and vinegar volcano. It's not which colored lights make plants grow better. It's actually really in-depth study. You definitely have to have an awesome project and then definitely you have to think of what it looks like and how it will appeal to other people. Half of the difficulty of a science fair is uh, the presentation aspect of it. Part of science is communicating. It isn't enough that one person on Earth knows it. You need to be able to explain it well enough so that other thoughtful people can understand it. If you're going to be an Edison or if you're going to be, you know, an Einstein, you still also have to be a writer. You have to be a speaker. And so at the science fair process, what's so authentic and wonderful about it is that students have to be able to create posters, they have to be able to writing, and they have to be able to speak one-on-one -on -one with live people. Science is a, is a mentoring, old-world, uh, master-apprentice kind of trade still. You learn from a master. It's always been that way. You don't learn science from a book. You learn calculus from a book. You learn the physics equations and the chemistry reactions. But you learn to do science.
by working with a scientist. The student may have an idea about what they want to do, but really usually is not aware of the way to go about it in a scientifically rigorous way. It's really helpful to be able to sit down with someone who knows what you're working on, why you're working on it. It's hard to do it by yourself in a vacuum. You need the inspiration and guidance. And you need the pat in the back. The scientists should be there to say, good effort. You know, that's a great try, but we've got to tighten this up. Uh, you need that inspiration. We're not going to wait until someone's 19 or 20 years old and in graduate school to actually have them play the flute for the first time. Okay? No one when they're 18 or 19 is going to walk into the, uh, the band director and say, wow, the trumpet looks really cool, I think I'll try it now. No, we start when they're young, doing the real trumpet, the real violin, and then eventually some of them stick with it long enough to become musicians. Why in the world would we wait until graduate school to have scientists and engineers actually do the real stuff? The judges there are also um, uh, confirming to them again that the types of things that they're doing is, is really fantastic. It's nerve-wracking at first, but then after like a little bit, you notice that they're really interested in your project and interested in what you did. I got some hints from the judges. You know, I, I got some ideas from the questions they were asking on what should be done next, how to do it. We are uh, happy to be uh, with, uh, in Syracuse, co-sponsors with Bristol-Myers Squib Squibb, the naming sponsors of the Greater Syracuse Scholastic Science Fair, because in that one activity, uh, so much of what we believe in is brought together. Um, and, and interest in, in, in math and science among young people, having fun with math and science, and also adults showing an appreciation to young people of the, pro of the projects and research that they've done. Really what the companies are getting from it isn't necessarily a value right now, um, but they are cultivating you know, the future scientists and engineers, and really in the hopes of just like our science fair, really in the hopes that these students come back to this area and work for Lockheed Martin or Bristol Myers Squibb. You know, these, these companies are seeing these students early and really getting, you know, a, a first glance at the potential these, you know, students can be as, as professionals. Not uncommonly, more companies come to do interviews than we have graduating seniors. Uh, multiple job offers, not so uncommon. And the work is just top-notch, frontier, a lot of frontier setting work, right, on the, on the limits of science and manufacturing and design. Lockheed Martin has 130,000 employees, mostly in the United States. 50,000 of those have technical uh, backgrounds. Uh, they're engineers or some type of scientist. At the same time, one in, one in three of our total population are eligible for retirement in the next five years. Uh, so we're feeling pressure to hire as many as, as 9,000 engineers every year, uh, almost 4,000 of whom need to be new graduates from, from undergraduate institutions. And, uh, and we, we need to fill the pipeline with talented people, um, and specifically young people who are, who are getting engineering and science degrees who hopefully will come to work for us. Uh, this year, we will hire one out of every 20 engineering graduates in the United States. I think science fairs promote excellence in science education, and that benefits the entire community. Science is definitely all around us, whether one chooses to enter the field or not. I think is science is, is, a, uh, is a, more than just a profession, it's a philosophy that, that can help you live life in a, in a rigorous, self-consistent way that's very rewarding. Well, sounds good to me. <laughs> I buy it. <laughs> I, I bought into it a long time ago. <laughs>